Having the ability to calculate the intrinsic value of a stock has been the key to success for many of the top investors in the world, such as Warren Buffett. In one of the top investing books of all time, The Intelligent Investor, Benjamin Graham laid out a formula that he used in order to calculate the intrinsic value of a stock. In today's video, I'm going to be taking you step by step on how to calculate the intrinsic value of a stock using Graham's formula. Okay, so now we're ready to start building out our model using Graham's formula, which will lead us to the intrinsic value of the stock. And you can see here over to the side, I've listed what each of these metrics here stands for. And as I build out this model, I'm going to kind of talk about what each of these things stands for. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an area just to kind of give my model a title and let me know what model I'm using. And I'm just going to title this Graham's valuation since we are using his model to build out this valuation. And the first thing we need to know, obviously, is what stock we're going to be looking at. And so for this example, let's go ahead and say that we're going to look at Apple to find the intrinsic value of Apple using Graham's formula. And as you can see here, the first thing that we need to do is we need to know the earnings per share of the company. So let's make an area for earnings per share. The next thing is this 8.5 right here, which if we come over here, we can see this is the price to earnings base for a company that has no growth. So I'm going to list that out here and we're just going to say price to earnings, no growth. And we know that this will be 8.5 according to Graham's formula. And when we come over here, we can see 2G. So this G is going to stand for the growth rate for typically over about the next five years. So I'm going to list two things here. I'm just going to type out growth rate. And then I'm going to list out below this 2G. And I'll come back to this 2G and talk a little bit about this more later. And then we can see here there's a 4.4 here. And we can see that this is the average yield of the AAA corporate bonds. And this was the average yield during Graham's time, but it's also applicable still today. So let's go ahead and list this out here. Let's see if I can spell correctly. And then the final thing in this formula is we need to know what Y stands for. So Y stands for the current yield of the AAA corporate bonds. And that'll be something that we have to look at, look up as it changes constantly. And so now we have all the metrics that we need to start filling out our valuation. So the very first piece of data that we're going to need about Apple in order to come to this valuation is we need to know its earnings per share. So there's a couple different ways that we can find the earnings per share. The first way we could do it is if we just go to Google, we can go to Yahoo Finance and we'll pull it up here. And if we come up here to the top, we can just search for Apple. And we'll pull up Apple. And now we have a page that has some data on Apple. We want to find its earnings per share for the trailing 12 months. And if we look right here, here it is right here. So we can see that it is 5.11. So if we come back here, you can put in 5.11 right here. But another quick way that you can do this in Google Sheets is use the Google Finance function. And if we do Google Finance and select Apple and just type in earnings per share, we can see that this will automatically fill in. So let's say I were to change the stock right here and put in Verizon. Verizon's earnings per share will automatically fill in. So it's kind of up to you how you do that part, but that's just a cool way you can automatically um, pull up the earnings per share and kind of automate the whole valuation process. And so we can see here the next thing that we want is our price to earnings for a no growth company. And Benjamin Graham went ahead and did the hard work and found this number to be 8.5. So if you're going to use this formula, that's a number that will stay consistent. So we can just put 8.5 right here. And the next thing I need to do is fix the way I spelt this. And okay, so now we need to know our growth rate. So he went ahead and made the growth rate 2G. So this G stands for growth rate. So we're going to go back to Yahoo Finance. And the growth rate is not listed on this page right here. But if we come over here to analysis and click on this, 
we can scroll down here and we can see for about the next five years, we can see the growth rate. And we can see that analysts are predicting Apple will have a growth rate at about 17.93%. And so this is kind of a number that's up to yourself. So if you feel like that's too high or too low, this is an adjustable number because this is a prediction about the future. For the sake of this model, I'm gonna go ahead and go with what the Yahoo Finance analysts believe it'll be, which is 17.93%. And this 2G is just the multiplier for this growth rate. So this is just simply going to be 2. And then we need to know the average yield of a AAA bond, which for this formula is sitting at 4.4. That's kind of the uh, average for all time. But the last thing that we need to know is what Y stands for, the current yield of the AAA corporate bonds. So we need to go back and we need to search for the current yield of a AAA corporate bond. So I'm just going to type this in Google. And we can see right here, I'm gonna pull it up and we wanna make sure we have the most up-to-date data on this. So let's go here and we can see here, this is the official economic data and we wanna know the AAA corporate bond yield. And if we look right now, we can see it is currently 2.57. And this is something that changes somewhat frequently, so it's important to come back and look at this data once you update your model. And so we're gonna put 2.57 right here. And now we have all the data that we need in order to calculate the intrinsic value of Apple. But before we do that, we wanna make sure that this is a reusable model. So I wanna go ahead and highlight everything in this model that may change in the future. So for example, the earnings per share is gonna change in the future. So let's go ahead and highlight this. And we know that this 8.5 won't change because it's consistent with the formula. This growth rate will definitely change in the future. So we wanna highlight this as well. Our two here won't change because that is our multiplier for the growth rate. Our 4.4 will not change because that's consistent with the formula. But why? Our current yield of the AAA corporate bond will most definitely change in the future. So we wanna highlight this as well. And now I wanna come down here and we actually wanna to start to calculate the intrinsic value of this stock. And so we are gonna use this data that we have already gathered and we are gonna plug it into Graham's formula. So we are gonna start with the equal sign and open this parentheses. And the first thing we need is our earnings per share. And we wanna take this and we wanna multiply it and have another open parentheses. And we're gonna take our 8.5 here and add that to these two numbers here multiplied together. So we'll take our 17.93, multiply this by two. And then we're gonna close two parentheses here. And then we wanna multiply all of this and we wanna multiply it by our 4.4. And let's close this parentheses, and then the final step is we wanna divide all of this by our current yield of the AAA corporate bonds, our Y value. So we'll do divide and divide it by 2.57. And when we hit enter, we can see that we currently have our intrinsic value of Apple based off of our formula and our model that we put in. And now we have our intrinsic value calculated, but we actually wanna take this a step farther. So we wanna know what our margin of safety is so that we can make a decision if we should be buying or selling this stock. So let's go ahead and box off this area on its own and we'll scroll down and we will quickly make a new area. And here we wanna know what the current price of the stock is. We wanna know the difference and we need a margin of safety. And then we need to know what our acceptable buy price is. And we'll go ahead and center this text as well. And so for the current price, this is something we could just look up on Google again, but I'm gonna go ahead and use the Google Finance formula again to do this and have it refer back to Apple. And this, give us, this gives us Apple's current share price. And so what I need to do now is I need to know the difference in the current price and the intrinsic value. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the current price and divide it by the intrinsic value. And here we can see, we wanna make this a percentage. So the difference in these prices is 37.58%. So the current price is only 37.58% of the intrinsic value of this stock. 
And let's say that our margin of safety is about 65%. So based off this, we wanna know what our acceptable buy price is. So we wanna take our 65% and we wanna multiply that by the intrinsic value of the stock. And we can see based on this data, our acceptable buy price is gonna be $252 or anything below that. And the last thing that I wanna to do to this model is I wanna add an area that tells me buy or sell. So I wanna automate this spreadsheet to where it will automatically tell me if I should be buying or selling this stock based off the variables that we've put in up here. So to do this, we are gonna use an if statement and we wanna say if our acceptable buy price is less than the intrinsic value, then we want it to say buy, and if not, we want it to say sell. And we hit enter here, we can see it says to buy the stock right now. So let's go ahead and format this to make it look better and box this off. So now we have a model based off of Graham's formula that is calculating the intrinsic value of Apple and it's also giving us a signal as to whether we should be buying or selling Apple based on our margin of safety. And one of the things that you'll notice about this model is our intrinsic value is currently much higher than the current price of Apple. And so this actually leads me to wanna to talk about one of the drawbacks of this formula. So many investors today believe that the growth part of the formula, which is this 8.5 plus 2G, is far too aggressive and a more realistic price to earnings base for a no growth company instead of 8.5 should actually be seven. And instead of 2G for a growth multiplier, it should actually be 1G. So what they've done is they have created a revised formula with those changes that I just mentioned. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take that revised formula and I'm gonna build out a model identical to the one that we just made and we will compare the two together. Okay, so I've jumped ahead and we can see over here to the right, I have built out a model based on Graham's revised valuation formula. So over here to the left, we have the old formula that we just used and the only changes that I've made on this side are formatting changes. So all the numbers are still the same, we can see. We still have our same intrinsic value. And here to the right, we can see really the only changes with this revised valuation formula is instead of the price to earnings of a company with no growth being 8.5, is it's now seven. And instead of a 2G multiplier over here, we now have a 1G multiplier. And when we take a look at the intrinsic value of the two, there's a large difference. So in our original formula, we can see that the intrinsic value came out to $388 per share. But on the revised formula, which is used more today, we can see that our intrinsic value is $218 per share. So we can see just how much of a difference that this small revision can actually make. And when we come down to our margin of safety area, we can see we kept the same 65% margin of safety. And when we take a look at our acceptable buy price for our revised formula, it's $141 per share, which is actually less than the current price. So based on our margin of safety, this is not a time that we would wanna be buying Apple stock. And when we compare this with the original valuation, we can see that would be a time we wanna buy the stock. So you can see just how big of a difference that the two formulas can make. So let's go ahead and do one more example. And what I've done is I have automated both of these models to where all we need to do is update the data that is in the yellow squares and our model will update automatically. So let's say that we wanna take a look at Verizon. So the first thing we need to do is we will just list Verizon stock ticker here and Verizon stock ticker here and we can see that our earnings per share has already filled in automatically. The next thing we need to do is we need to find the projected growth rate of Verizon. So let's go back over to Google and we will go to Yahoo Finance. And we need to find the growth rate. So we'll put in their ticker here and we will search for Verizon Communications. And we will come over here to analysis. And if we scroll all the way near the bottom, we can see that their projected growth rate is going to be 3.17%. So let's go back to our model 
and we will put in 3.17 for the growth rate. And we can see here our current yield on AAA corporate bonds. We just looked that up earlier, so we know that hasn't changed. And I don't wanna change my margin of safety right now. I think I wanna keep that the same. So we can see based off the data that we just put in, we already have our intrinsic value calculated in both of these models. And we can see with Graham's original valuation formula, the intrinsic value is $122 per share. And with the revised valuation formula, we get an intrinsic value of $84 per share. And when we take a look at our margin of safety, it's kind of the same thing as the Apple stock. Based on the original valuation, this would be a time we want to be buying the stock. And based on our new valuation, which is the revised formula, we can see this is not a time that we would want to be buying the stock. Keep in mind that no valuation model is perfect. And what we really want to shoot for when creating financial models is a range where we think the intrinsic value of the stock falls into. Always do your due diligence when making an investment decision and keep in mind that I'm not a financial advisor. I hope this video has helped show you how to calculate the intrinsic value of a stock using Benjamin Graham's formula. If you'd like to be able to download this model that I built in Google Sheets, then you can head to my Patreon page at the link in the description. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.